you've been following this series from the beginning, basically uh, we've created a very basic web application using HTML, JavaScript, jQuery, jQuery Mobile. Uh, this is what it looks like here, uh, running as a local file. I've also copied it to my website, filmsarchrist.com forward slash scripts forward slash list is where it's at right now. If you're watching this video uh, two years from now and it's not there anymore, things move on. Uh, and you can quickly search through this list. And, um, and I put it on my web server because in this tutorial we're just going to basically look at it, making it seem like it's a local application, but connecting the internet for the information. Um, I think this is a much more efficient way uh, because uh, you can modify and update the application without the user having to update anything on their system. Because basically we're creating a viewer to view our application uh, that is written in HTML and JavaScript. And we're doing this basically so you can write the application once and it will run on pretty much any operating system with a current browser on it, but we're packaging it to make it seem more like a standalone application. If for some reason you want to distribute it with an installer of some sort, you can put all this in the installer and have it install. Um, that being said, I think in most cases you're better off just using a website. Just sometimes some people like uh, having things run local. So you could do this all local if you watched the previous tutorial with GTK, GTK and WebKit with uh, Python. We're going to do basically the same thing today with C++ and instead of GTK we're going to do uh, uh, Qt uh, which you could do with Python as well. I'm just showing two different examples. I use GTK in Python. Here I'm going to use Qt. Uh, and this will be written in C++ which I am not very good at C++ but this is a very basic application. I'm going to try to do my best to um, to explain everything as best I can. Uh, this code is even shorter than the Python code. Uh, you actually probably be able to, you'll have a uh, on a Windows machine, it will be an executable thing. What, one of the, uh, there's pluses and minuses to both. Python, you're going to have to have, um, obviously, Python installed as an interpreter, web, WebKit, uh, and uh, the GTK, uh, or if you use Qt, the same thing. Um, and then you have a Python script, which you could package within an executable in multiple different ways. We're going to get more into that in this series as we go on, on different ways to make executables. Um, this is written in C++, so you'll have a, a binary thing. Nice thing about the Python is, since it's a script, there's no recompiling, but uh, with this, although we'll write this once, and this code will work on a Windows Mac, or it should work on a Windows Mac or Linux desktop machine, um, without any changes. You'll have to recompile it for each operating system. You'll also have to recompile it if you're on a different architecture, like if you wanted to run this on an ARM processor. Um, so that's a drawback. You don't need to change code, you just need to recompile it. Um, but we'll jump right in here. And once again, uh, to do this, you'll obviously need uh, your WebKit modules installed and your QT uh, uh, information installed. It, I'm doing this on Linux. All that's in the repositories. I'm not going to get into that because that's pretty simple. Just search your repositories. If you just install uh, QT Designer, even though we're going to do all this from Terminal, that should install every package you need, even though it's going to be installing more than you need. Um, but that's not part of the tutorial. Hopefully you already know how to install that if you're going to be writing this up. So uh, let's go ahead and Minimize that, go in here. I'm in an empty directory here, and I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. I'm going to create a C++ code file. I'll call it mylistview.cpp. In here, I'll start, I'll need to include two packages. Include um, Q application and include Q web kit forward slash q web view okay and now we can start our main function so int main and here uh, this 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 little uh, bit of information here I believe is mainly to grab arguments once again I'm not the best at that's I'm not that great at C and I know even less about C++ um, but uh, this is information I believe so you can pass arguments because I've used this before to pass arguments to an application which we won't be doing here but uh, if I remove this I get errors so I'm just leaving it in there so I'm sorry I can't explain that better but that's where we're at so within our main function we are going to call QT or I'm sorry Q application we're gonna create app pass it the non-existent arguments 
the uh, count and the variable information, I believe, is what these two stand for here. And then we're also going to create an object. It's going to be a web view object. And we'll call it view. So uh, asterisk view equals new Q web view. Okay. So we're almost done. Uh, we're going to want to do our return because you always want to return information. And we'll say app.exe c and that is uh, what we created up here the app we're just basically executing it when we get to the end here it will execute all the other code I believe uh, <laughs> so now there's only three more things we need to put in here three more lines of code we want to give our default window a size we want to tell it where our HTML code is and then make it all visible with show so we're going to take our uh, object here that we created view and we're going to say use view and resize it to last time we said 600 width 800 height and then we'll say once again use our view object and this time we're going to load something we're going to load a Q URL in this case because we're going to be linking to the files in this case on my server and we'll give it the link http colon forward slash forward slash films by chris dot com forward slash scripts forward slash list forward slash index dot html in this case. Another great thing about hosting this on your web server is that uh, in this case I'm using html but you could also have server side scripts such as php which I've been doing tutorials on. But when it comes to server-side programs, you can write that in any language you want. So it's a very easy way if you want to write stuff in C, write stuff in Python, write stuff in Perl or Bash or PHP. Uh, you can do all that on the server-side and have your server do all the work and just output the HTML. So if you know basic HTML and you have a server, you can now write these applications for any operating system, not having to install, you can, uh, you know, you have your server, so you know what your server can handle. And uh, although you can write local things for Android with Python or local things uh, in a shell script or bash script for, for Android, um, it can be kind of difficult to distribute that. So doing it this way, using HT HTML as your interface, you can use your server-side script and write in whatever language you want. So that's a big benefit of writing applications like this. So now the last thing we need to do is take our view object and we're saying show. So this code right here is a lot shorter than our Python code, uh, which is nice. Uh, automatically puts in the scroller there for you um, and show will show all. Uh, so all we have to do now is save this. And now uh, we're going to say QMake, which hopefully you have installed as I talked about at the beginning, you want to install those packages first, dash project. So QMake dash project. And when I list out, you can see it created a new uh, little uh, project uh, based on the name of our folder. So my folder is called my list and it created a project folder or file. So now I can view, uh, or sorry, use Vim to view this and edit it because we need to add a line to this. So Right here automatically, it put in here that uh, our main source file is the uh, mylistview.cpp. We need to add a line to so that when we compile it, it knows to include the Qt webkit. So we're going to say Qt space plus equals webkit. Now that we've done that, uh, we just need to run qmake and then make. And it should do, oh, folder. Uh, fatal error, no such directory. I think part of my problem might be, I think, uh, let me remove the make file. I'll remove my, my list uh, project file. 
because I think, and I've done this before, we want our CPP file to be the same as our folder name when we're working with Qt here. So let's move our myListView.cp to my list, since that's what I named the folder. Your, I forgot, with Qt, you want to make sure that your main CPP file is the same name as your uh, the folder you're in, because that's going to be your project name. Now I will do QMake. I'm glad I did that, because if I didn't do that in this video, you guys might have done it and not know what was going on. So QMake-project, it created our project file here, so I'm going to vim into that uh, pro. I'm going to add our information here on Qt plus equal webkit to include uh, the Qt webkit here. Save that. Then I'm going to say uh, QMake and then make. And I am still getting that error. Oh. I do think I was right about renaming that folder, the folder and the file the same. I could be wrong as well, but I think I'm right on that. But uh, I think it's just a typo in my code. Oops. Uh, we've got here import webkit. I think the K needs to be capital. Yep, that would be it. So now QMake and make. Okay, good to go. Sorry about that. So I've listed that out. You can now see that I have an, an executable file here called my list. Uh, and I'll say uh, colon forward slash my list. When I run that, it opens it up. And uh, it's 600 by 800 uh, in width and height. We can, of course, search through our list. And if we made these executable, they would be executable. And even though this seems like a standalone application, it's actually connecting to my server, which really the only drawback, in my opinion, of having it run on your web server is the fact that uh, you need an internet connection. But really, who doesn't at these points? But you can also connect it to a local file, as I showed with the previous tutorial using a Python and GTK with WebKit. Um, you just need to point it to the local file rather than a uh, remote file. Um, close that and it closes the window so that's pretty much it uh, once again uh, to compile this for Windows or Mac uh, you can do that uh, without having to change the code at all uh, you can you should be able to cross compile for Windows uh, I've never been able to find a way to cross compile for Mac so to get this to work you will actually as far as I know need a Mac machine with Mac OS to compile this uh, for that. For Windows, you should be able to cross compile. I'm not going to get into that on, on this tutorial. Um, so, drawback is you have to recompile it for each system and architecture that you want it to run on, but you don't need to change the code at all. Um, also, when distributing it, obviously, you'll have your executable file. You'll also need to package it with your needed libraries. Um, once again, as I've been trying to get across with all these tutorials on uh, using HTML and JavaScript as our user interface and using other programs as the back end, whether it be local or remote on the server. Um, the basically, uh, writing the program is the easy part. What's, dis dif what's difficult is the dis distribution of it because uh, every operating system does it differently. Linux makes it pretty easy with their package managers. You can create a package and you can have that package call the package manager for dependencies. Windows, there's really not an option for that currently. So you either have to package all the dependencies into your installer um, or have your installer download it. Kind of like when you go to install an application on Windows and it says, oh, you need ActiveX or oh, you need Flash, which are two things you probably have installed, but there's examples like that. And it either downloads them from your net or if you got it on a CD, it might have that in a folder already. Uh, luckily, if you're working with open source dependencies, you're not much of an issue. If you're working with proprietary stuff, you may not be allowed to package it with your system. So that's another reason why you might need to have your installer download it from the internet. So I hope that uh, you're enjoying this tutorial, this, this series, um, showing you how easy it is to, to wrap uh, code that's written in HTML uh, and with JavaScript. Uh, as a standalone application, uh, you'll still have to package it 
uh, as far as um, an, an installer of some sort. Uh, we're going to get a little more into that as this series goes on. Right now, I'm just looking at basically wrapping the code. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying these tutorials. Please be sure to click on the annotation for the entire playlist. Uh, visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. If you have any questions uh, that are technical questions, the comments below are probably not the best spot because I probably won't even see them, especially as this video gets older in time. The best way to get an questions answered uh, from me is to try to connect up with me in the IRC channel. Don't come into the IRC channel just looking for me. Come to the IRC channel to chat with people on that channel. That's the reason I have the IRC channel because I can't always be there. I can't answer every question, but we have a community going in there and hopefully someone in there will be able to help you or point you in the right direction if they can't help you. And uh, if I'm around, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Uh, you can get there. We're on Freenode. It's Pound Films by Chris. Once again, that's Chris with the K. You go to my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. Uh, in there, uh, on my current website, uh, if you're watching this for a while now, my site might change. But there should be a link somewhere to the IRC channel. Currently, it's under the social networking tab. Click on IRC. It will bring up a uh, web interface to the IRC channel. That's one way of getting there if you don't have a IRC client already. So... I thank you for watching. Uh, uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to the source code uh, for this. And I hope that you have a great day.